mystery is my hobby. Was he around here yesterday? Now, don't go getting your dander up at me, mister. 
I don't have to answer your questions, and I won't. Unless you keep a civil tongue in your head. Oh, you won't. Well, uh, yes? Take it easy, take it easy. Miss Randall, we'd appreciate it very much if you would answer our questions. Perhaps you don't realize it, but uh, Mrs. Luther was murdered. Murdered? Oh, but I thought... Yes, we all thought it was suicide at first, but the evidence pointed uh, the other way now. You see that we have clues that uh, turned up since that indicate foul play. Now, will you be good enough to tell us what you can about Craig Mackey? You mean you think Craig did it? Look, lady, we don't know who did it. Maybe you did it. Now, uh... I have a very idea. How dare you? All right, so you didn't do it. Now, are you going to tell us where we can find Craig Mackey, or do we stay here trying to get you to admit that you did do it? I'll never admit it. It was Craig. It must have been Craig. He was here last night, and that must have been him. What do you mean by here, Miss Anderson? I mean right here in this house. He spent the evening here. He left about 11 o'clock, and, and right after that, I heard the shot. Well, well, well. Why didn't you tell me that this morning, lady? Because Craig asked me not to mention it, that's why. But now that you think we might uh, suspect you of the crime, you decided to tell the truth. Is that it, Miss Randall? Of course that's it. Maybe I'm in love with Craig, but I'm not enough in love with him to take the rap for a murder he committed. But isn't it surprising the things that people say at times like these? Someone yells murder and everyone else begins dreaming up motives for everyone else. Yes, I quite agree with you, Inspector. Well, Miss Randall... Where can we find this uh, Craig Mackey? Down at the Monte Vista Dam. He's a construction engineer. Oh. Uh-huh. And while you're talking to him, you can tell him that I know all about the fur coat. He makes me sick thinking he can get away with that. Are you referring to a mink coat that belongs to Mrs. Luther, Miss Lander? Of course I am. Craig bought it for her. I know one of the girls who works in Hobson's department store, and she told me. What? Well, we'd be wasting our time talking to anyone else. This paper's got all the answers right here. It does seem so, doesn't it, Inspector? Miss Randall. Does Mrs. Luther's husband know that Craig Mackey bought her a mink coat? Well, if he doesn't, he will as soon as he gets back from his trip up north. Norma's been yowling for a mink coat for years. But won't he be a bit uh, annoyed that another man bought it for her? Are you kidding? He wouldn't even ask where it came from, so long as it shut Norma up and he could have a little peace. Now I've heard everything. Lady, if you've got any more tidbits of information, you're going to spring on it. Get him over fast, will you? I'm getting a little dizzy. I told you I wasn't going to answer your questions, and I'm not. You're not fooling me. I know how you policemen are always incriminating people. Well, I'll be... Miss Randall's been very helpful, Inspector. Let's not bother her anymore. I suggest that we go down to the Monte Vista Dam and have a talk with Craig Mackey, shall we? Right now, anything seems like a good idea. Let's get out of here. (laughs) You know what I think, Bart? No, what, Inspector? That babe was lying in her seat. She found herself in a spot and began thinking him up as she went along. Hmm. Well, if you're right, we won't find her at home when we get back. She knows we can easily check her statements. I don't know how we're going to check screwy statements like she made. What's the matter? I think that uh, shack must be the field office of the construction company. Let's go up and find out. Okay. I hope this Craig Mackey won't be as nutty as the dame he's been playing around with. Yes, a sign on the door says Mackey Construction Company. Well, let's go in. Gentlemen, looking for me? If you're Craig Mackey, we are. I'm Mackey. What can I do for you? We're from police headquarters, bub. We got a few questions we want to ask you. Police headquarters? Yep. Oh, then you must be investigating the death of Mrs. Luther. A uh, routine checkup, I presume? You might call it that. What's your story, Mackey? Story? I haven't any story. If Mrs. Luther wants to shoot herself, that's her business. It doesn't concern me. Well, now, how do you like that? Mrs. Luther didn't shoot herself, Mackey. She was murdered. Murdered? Well, that makes things... Are you implying that I murdered Norma Luther? We're not that subtle, Bub. Why'd you shoot her? Why did I... <laughs> oh, come, gentlemen. Do you think if I murdered Norma Luther, I'd be sitting here at this desk now? It would be smart of you to do just that, Mackey. I suppose you can account for your whereabouts last night. No, of course I can. I uh, spent the evening in town playing poker with some of the boys who work here in the dam project. Mm-hmm. You didn't call to Luther home at all? I'll give you an indirect answer to that question. As I understand it, Mrs. Luther died between 11 and 12 o'clock last night. That's correct. From 10 o'clock last night until 2 this morning, I was playing poker. Where I was before then is nobody's business. Oh. I'm afraid we'll have to make it our business, Mackey. Polly Randall claims you spent the evening with her. Yeah. She says you left her place around 11 o'clock. And right after that, she heard the shot. She knows darn well I wasn't at her place last night, and she knows why. Why, Mackey? Because someone else was there, that's why. Oh, this is getting interesting. Who was it, bub? Ethan Luther. Luther? Norma Luther's husband? Yeah, Norma Luther's husband. They've been playing around together for years. How do you know that? Norma told me. 
She also told me she was through with him. Well, well, well. But it looks to me like we stumbled on a true romance. So you arrived at your sweetie's all unsuspecting last night and found her in the arms of her next-door neighbor. Is that right, Bob? Crudely, that's right. Tell me, Mackey, did you have any uh, particular reason for going to Miss Randall's last night? I don't get it. Apparently, Miss Randall wasn't expecting you, or she wouldn't have been entertaining Luther. So I uh, wondered if you had a, a surprise for her, a present, perhaps? Yeah, to be more specific, a fur coat. How do you know about that? Oh, we know lots of things. The fur coat was found in Mrs. Luther's home, Mackey. We think it was because of that coat that Norma was murdered. Well, that's crazy. I bought the coat yesterday at Hobson's. What's wrong with that? You bought it for Polly Rando, didn't you, Mackie? So what if I did? But when you found her entertaining Luther, you decided to give it to Norma. First, however, you let Polly see what you had, thereby making your revenge sweet. You're pretty clever, mister. My guess is, Mackie, that Luther was hiding in another part of the house while you were showing the coat to Polly. You knew he was there, but he didn't know you knew it. You still haven't got anything on me. One more question, Mackie. Is your father, David Mackie, president of this construction company? Sure he is. Why? Nothing, nothing. Thank you. Come along, Inspector. We've an errand to do in town, and then we're returning to the Luther home. Look, Bart, how is leaving that suicide note at the local police department for analysis going to help us any? Oh, it might not help us at all, Inspector. However, we've a lot of loose ends to clear up before we solve this case. It's all solved as far as I'm concerned. Craig Mackey's our man. Oh. Then you think Mackey was lying, too? Sure I do. They're all lying. Look, this guy Mackey comes to town, see? He's a good-looking kid, and the babes go for him. He gets acquainted with this normal Luther and falls for her. Only he doesn't know she's married. And then Hubby appears on the scene. Craig, being the jealous type, decides to kill her, eh? Sure, it's simple. I think perhaps you're right, Inspector. You do? Yes, I do. Well, here we are. Hey, that's all right. What's all right? There's not a light in the place. Didn't you tell Sam to stay here? Sure I did, but I didn't tell him to sit under an arc light. Come on, come on. Sam won't be far away. There's something strange about this, Inspector. I don't like it. Oh, you're always thinking there's something strange about something. Sam! Hey, Sam! Sam must have fallen asleep, Inspector. Not Sam. He's one of the best boys I've got. Sam! Sam Calver! Let's go around back. All right. Inspector. What's the matter? Get out your flashlight. There's something here on the ground. Come on. Okay, here we are. Jumping, Judas, it's Sam. Yes, it's Sam. And with a bullet through his head. What a dirty cop killer. All right, gents, get your hands up, both of you. One false move and I'll blow your brains out. Police headquarters, and don't give us any of that malarkey about you didn't know it. 
I hate a cop killer. Cop killer? I didn't kill that officer. He was dead when I got here. Naturally, when you two came in. Yeah, I... yeah, sure. You thought we were a couple of murderers returning to the scene of our crime. That gives me a pain. Now, I suppose you're going to tell us you didn't spend the last evening with your girlfriend next door. Well, I, uh... Yeah, I, I, I. Everybody says I, I when they can't think up some kind of new fish story. Now... That was Polly. She must have discovered the policeman's body. You're probably right, Luther. Let's find out. Ethan. Ethan, is... Oh, it's the policeman. That's right, Miss Randall. How do you happen to be standing outside here? I wasn't standing outside. I saw a light in the window. I knew Ethan must be home, and... And I came over to comfort him. Comfort him. Now, there's one for the record. Look, lady, as far as we can figure, you did enough comforting last night to last, last for... Last night? What are you talking about? I haven't seen even in weeks. Uh, Polly, uh, I... They know about last night. Know about last night? Well, then they know... Know what, lady? Nothing. I don't have to answer your questions, and I'm not going to. Fortunately, Miss Randall, it won't make any difference whether you answer our questions or not. We know who shot Mrs. Luther, and we also know who murdered Officer Culver. You... You know who killed my wife? Of course. I don't believe it. If you know, why don't you make an arrest? That'll come in good time, Miss Randall. Both of you are at liberty to come and go as you like for the present. Inspector, we're wasting our time here. Come along with me. Look, Bart, weren't you being a little optimistic when you told those two last night that... You, uh, knew who the murderer was? Oh, well, possibly, Inspector. However, I think we, uh, justified my optimism with that inquiry at Hobson's department store. Yeah, I know it was about the fur coat. Yes. I was just wondering how many fur coats a store of that size carried in stock. So the coat was ordered especially for Craig Mackey from New York, eh? Yes, and paid for by him in cash. So now we know young Mackey bought the coat. Inspector, in a town of this size, there wouldn't be many $5,000 coats carried in stock at any store. It was just reasonable to suppose that if a sale were made, the front office would know about it. Yeah, I suppose you're right. You got some other plans in mind? Oh, yes, yes, definitely. I'm going to start at the police headquarters now and uh, pick up that note we left for analysis. And uh, what am I going to do? You, Inspector, are going out to the dam project and pick up young Mackie and bring him out to Polly Randall's house. Unless I'm greatly mistaken, we'll find both Polly and Ethan Luther waiting for us there. <laughs> I don't have to answer your questions. Look, lady, put on another record, will you? You've given us that routine so many times, I'm beginning to get a headache. Well, I don't have... All right, all right. Nobody's asking any questions. Now, keep quiet, will you? Okay, Bart, let's get this over with. All right, glad to inspect you. Mackie, we've checked and found it was you who bought that mink coat at Hopkins' department store. And so what? I've already admitted that I bought it. But you didn't tell us you paid cash for it. Your father hasn't account at Hopkins. You've always used it before. Why didn't you use it this time? I didn't want to. Well, that's fair enough. You didn't want your father to know that you were buying $5,000 coats for your girlfriends. In a moment, I'm going to prove that that's an important piece of evidence. That I've got to see. You will. Luther, you admitted that you came here to Miss Randall's the night before last instead of going home after you returned from your uh, trip up north. If it's any of your business, yes. We're making it our business, Junior. Answer the questions and never mind the ad lib. You don't have to answer the questions if you don't want to, Ethan. There she goes again. Hey, keep quiet, will you? I won't keep quiet. I'll talk if I want to. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, go ahead and talk then. Who's stopping you? I won't talk. I don't have to. Oh, my gosh. Bye. Miss Randall, perhaps you'd like to explain to us why we shouldn't accuse you of murdering Norman Luther. Accuse me? That's right. Well, I certainly will explain it. I was right in this house every minute, that's why. And how do we know that? Because these two men were with me, that's why. Oh, both of them? All the time? Ethan came first. He dropped in to say hello on his way home. Just sort of neighborly like, eh? Yes, just sort of neighborly like. While he was here, a knock came at the door. Luther stepped into the next room. Why? Because he thought it might be someone who'd get the wrong impression. That's why. Oh, my. Was this uh, new arrival Craig uh, Mackey, Miss Randall? Yes, it was. Craig had a mink coat in a box. He showed it to me and said he was going to give it to Ethan's wife. And uh, what did you say? I said, isn't that nice? Well, I thought it was very sweet of him. Well, I'm a cross-eyed woodchuck. Mm, and then what happened, Miss Randall? Craig put the coat back in the box and left. Ethan came out of the other room. We talked a while, and then he went home. And then? Craig came back. How long did Craig stay, Miss Randall? Until 11 o'clock. 
I went to the door with him. As we stood there talking, we heard a shot, or, or thought we did. Yeah, the last time you told that story, you were sure. I was sure. Only Craig said he thought it was the backfire of an automobile or something. But you didn't think so? No. After Craig left, I went over to the Luther's and found Norma dead. I screamed. I'll bet. Was Luther there? No, I ran home and called the police. And that's all I'm going to tell you, so you needn't ask me any more questions. Can we count on that? You've told us quite enough, Miss Lando. Well, Mackie, what have you to say? There's nothing more to say. Polly's told it all. I see. Luther, how about you? Well, what about me? Did you get home before Mackie left your wife? No. You found her then, trying on the fur coat. You became raging man and asked her who'd given it to her. She laughed in your face, so you picked up a shotgun and shot her. Oh, that's a lie. I didn't. You can't prove it. Oh, yes, I can prove it. In the first place, that suicide note that we found on the floor lying beside your wife's dead body was written a year ago. What? How did you know? That was easy to prove. By a chemical analysis at local police headquarters. She wrote that note a year ago, hoping that you'd break down and buy her a coat. (laughs) Smart guy, huh? Yes, smart guy. But you laughed at her. However, you kept the note. It came in handy the night before last after you'd shot your wife. You reasoned it would serve well to plant the suicide theory. Keep your hand away from your pocket, Danton. Three murders are no more than one. This gun... I hate a cop killer, Luther. Drop that gun and stand back, you fool. Oh, you won't do anything. Take this. Warn them that mystery is my hobby. 